today I'm going to show you how to use spherical coordinates in the node system in Blender. Um, first I'm just setting up uh, to get ready with some displacement. So I'm going to be using vector displacement so make sure you're in cycles. Um, Alright, so let's delete the principal shader and add in a texture coordinates node. We're going to be using the object coordinates. Um, so the formula for spherical coordinates to convert between Cartesian and which is rectangular coordinates and spherical coordinates You can find it on Wikipedia I'll, I use it sometimes when I forget a few of the things so um, first thing Separate the X and Y components. We'll need it later to calculate the length of just the X and Y parts and I'm also calculating the length of the object itself, which will be our radius. So, um, as you can see here, um, it says eight. It says the arc tangent in the formula, but um, make sure that you use arc tangent two, which will take. Make sure that uh, the sign gets changed when it's in the different quadrant. So, for eight and two, you just plug in first value which gets divided by the second value and then we have our three um, new coordinates x y instead of x y and z we have our rho or our radius our phi and our theta let's uh, quickly rename these and group them into node group And uh, after this, we'll make another node to convert from spherical coordinates back to our regular Cartesian coordinates. Okay, let's also go to the outliner to rename our node group to spherical coordinates. Alright, so now let's get try to convert back um, these formulas are obviously also on Wikipedia and um, just to show you the radius is obviously uniform because it's a circle but the angle theta goes from the top from the circle to the bottom or the sphere to the bottom while the angle phi just goes around the z-axis uh, counterclockwise this will be useful when you're manipulating the coordinates later on so I'm just setting up. Um, we're gonna multiply everything by the radius, all the coordinates, but so you can see me setting it up. And now we need the cosine, the sine of phi and theta or phi, depends how you want to say it. So you can see me duplicating these. Then I'll take a look at the formula later on just to see with what goes into what. Um, you can rename this by pressing F2. If you press Shift F3, you can switch between a um, node, the shader editor, and um, the Shift F3 and Shift F5 to switch between the shader editor and the regular viewport. You can see me do that in the beginning. Um, so yeah, the formulas are there. So X is R times the sine of theta times um, the cosine of phi. No. This times the sine of phi. If you've ever used polar coordinates, you'll recognize the cosine and sine of phi is coming from there, and then the sine of theta just comes from the height of the uh, I don't know what it's called, the longitudinal line. I'm not sure. Okay, so now let's just rearrange everything. Um, so we, you can press, if you have a node wrangler, you can press shift and then uh, right click drag or left click drag, I'm not sure, to re add a reroute. And let's rename the values, radius 5 and theta. Okay, so... Uh, as you can see this looks just like object coordinates 
and that's because it's exactly the same thing and we're done so now let's see how this is useful because obviously you might have could have just as well have plugged in a object coordinates instead of converting back um, but now we have control over the radius and we can manipulate it and then we can plug a different radius into the vector displacement so now everything is the same so it's just gonna displace um, along the normal but if we change the radius we can use the sign of for example one of the angles like phi and the radius is not gonna be constant anymore it's gonna change as phi changes So now we're multiplying it to get a um, different period. And as you can see, this corresponds with a uh, value we multiply by. Um, quickly changing or removing the subdivision to make it a bit faster. As I'm recording as well, it slows it down a bit. And then we can do the same with theta. So phi goes around the z-axis clockwise or counterclockwise and theta goes from the top of the sphere to the bottom and if we add them together we get something like this so you have one factor to control how much it goes from top to bottom and one from how much it goes around um, I like to add in an absolute value between the add node as well between the sign and the add or the multiply rather, because um, it tends to go inside. So first I'm gonna add a multiply to control just how much effect it has. And I'm multiplying by the radius so that uh, it's affected by the scale of our object. So you can see we're searching for the absolute value. And now there are no more holes. But it does add double as much um, spikes, if you like. Alright, so let's group them into... Let's make a node group. Pressing Ctrl G. Um, ah, yeah, I made a mistake there. So Ctrl G to group them into one node group. Um, quickly rename the values or the radius. And then the angles, phi and theta. And then we can add um, two more values to control how many spikes there are. So it's not correct what I'm typing here. I typed x factor and y factor. It should just be um, phi factor and theta factor or x, y factor and z factor. I'll change that later and you can just play around with them try and get some nice values so I'm renaming them to make it more accurate and obviously I'm using a sphere here but you can use any other object you can try it on a, don on <laughs> on a donut or a torus if you like and see what it does I mean, you're free to experiment. Uh, I like I call the node flower power because it looks like a flower. And um, so rearranging, so make it a bit smaller. You can, if you select multiple nodes, you can use scale and to um, rearrange them or rotate even, and G obviously to grab them. So now, I thought I made a mistake in the node group because. I thought it should just be a plain circle, but obviously if we're using the sign it shouldn't be. So you'll see me play around with the values a little bit and get some pretty crazy results. I'm just gonna clean up the node tree a little bit. Yeah. 
sorry if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it, but this mic is a cat making noise. And I don't know why I'm taking so long here. Okay, so as you can see it looks really weird. And in just a second, I'll show you what it looks like without the displacement. And there, that's a pretty cool pattern. So if you remove the displacement, you get something really nice. And then by adjusting the values, okay, you can obviously get a nice flower pattern. And this looks like a polar rose pattern. And if you don't want to have like a sharp cut at the end, you're going to need integer values. So now, um, pretty much done with, with uh, the flower, and I'm going to um, show you something else we can do. How else? How we can manipulate coordinates in another way? Something using a we're used to the Euclidean distance, which is obviously. Um, you take the square of the x, y, and z coordinates, and then you take the square root. But you can you have different kinds of lengths. And for example, you can um, take just the absolute values instead of squaring and then taking the square root. And you you saw me press the shield icon, which makes it a single user, so that when I close the Blender file. Um, even though I might not be using the node itself, it is still gonna save it. So that's what it does. Because otherwise it will just delete, delete it and then all our hard work will be gone. So I'm setting up new material for trying out this special length. So for the special length, we'll need to change the radius of the spherical coordinates. First, rename this new node group. I mean. And you have to make sure that you make it a single user because otherwise it's gonna change both of them. So special length. And Alright, so now we need to change the radius part. Okay. Um, we also need to add one more factor, the power. So if you're killing in distance, that's two, but with other um, lengths, uh, you can use one or it doesn't have to be an integer, it could be a negative exponent as well. So I'm just making some room and then quickly setting up the node tree. So we take the, we raise the x, y, and z to the power that's specified. We take the absolute value and then we take the square, uh, the nth root, which is the same as multiplying to the power one over, or the, raising it to the one over the power. And um, it obviously speeds up a lot if you have Node Wrangler. And I'm adding these reroute groups so that when we make it into a reroute node, so that when we make it into a group, um, we won't have multiple values plugged in, and we'll just have one. So now, let's. So last step is so over. Dividing one by our power and then raising everything to the power. But we still need to add the values together. So there we go. So we can plug this value into the radius. First, let's make it into a group. Again, Control G. Rename the values so you don't lose track. And then later on. We'll 
rename the node group itself. And that's our new length. So for power equal to two, this is exactly the same as just taking the normal length. And for other powers, we get some crazy results. So currently it's set to zero and one divided by zero Blender doesn't like that, so it's just gonna ignore it and say we're raising everything to the zero of power, which is the same as saying we have one. So that's why when the power is set to zero, we just get a perfect sphere. So I'm gonna set the default value to two, which is the normal length, and can press Ctrl X to delete something with, but still keep the node group uh, nodes attached. And so with two, it's the same thing. But if you change it to like something like minus two, we get some crazy results because the length is different. <laughs> and that's a sphere in a, another mathematical world, if you'd like. Now, like I said, we don't need to use a sphere. We can use uh, a cube. I'm gonna use. A, wave texture and so I switched to a cube because it looks better and I made sure to change the wave texture to bands and now we get something like a super shape well a two-dimensional super shape which is basically like switching from a sphere to a um, astero uh, asteroid like shape with four spikes or star so with one this is just and this is a this this is because we're using uh, the different lengths that we get these kind of thing. because this is what a circle looks like with that kind of power. So I guess in that if you instead of a Euclidean plane, you'll have a different kind of plane, and that is how a circle looks. Like. And you can get some nice results inside the cube, it looks cool as well. And you can even plug it into the vector displacement, although it does get weird pretty quick. And you have to subdivide the cube, obviously, but I prefer it without, so I'll just leave it like that. And let's go back to the flower, and I'll quickly set up some. Mm, a shader and create our final render that you saw at the beginning of the video so make sure you have enough bounces if you're using glass otherwise um, the light is not gonna pass all the way through and obviously play with the values a little bit set up the camera how you'd like I mixed in a emission shader so to make it seem like it's glowing from the beginning but I want it to, to be pretty subtle because otherwise it looks pretty crazy so I'm use the radius value from our special length and then just add the camera change some of the settings output and hit render but um, there was a small problem because I didn't realize that the queue was still there so I've just hit it but I need to delete it as well and there we go that's what I was expecting and you can just save the image as a PNG file you can make animate this obviously I didn't want to do that it cost a lot of power and there you go Thanks for watching and I'll see you.